Time for another board game review, and this time we have the dice building game uh, Dice Masters. This is the Marvel Uncanny X-Men Dice Masters starter box, and this was sent to me by uh, WizKids, and it's designed by Mike Elliott and Eric M. Lang. This comes with 12 action dice, uh, 16 character dice, and 16 sidekick dice, and it also comes with character cards and dice bags. WizKids also sent me mats and some like boosters for other sets, but I'm not gonna include those in this review, although I will use one just to sh just as a visual. But just so you know, the starter box does not come with anything, any other, any mats or anything like that. Now in a previous episode, I did a review for Quarriers, which was the same designers, and this is basically the spiritual sequel to it, and it improves a lot of things, and it also makes it a focused two-player game. So if you wanna see the specific differences between the two, um, you can check out that video. Uh, and compare it. I will talk a little bit about the differences and what I like better about this compared to Quarriers. If you haven't played Quarriers, I'm gonna give you, I'll give you an explanation of how to play this. Plus, there are some differences um, that are in, only in this version of the game. So in Dice Masters, your goal is to reduce your opponent's life to zero. Now, like I said before, the, the starter pack does not come with this mat. The uh, WizKids provided this for me, so keep that in mind with this review. Um, because it's a very nice mat, but unfortunately it does not come with the starter pack. You have to kind of get it on your own. So you have your life here. And then in Dice Masters, uh, both players have their own individual cards. You're not, unlike Warriors, you're not buying from the same pool. Um, except for the uh, basic action dice, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but you both have your own. And the original starting game advises you to try just two characters each, because it's, you know, if you're just learning. So I'll do that for the sake of this video as well. So, uh, let's say first player's character is Kitty Pride and Cyclops, and the second players are Angel and Juggernaut. So, these are characters that whose dice that the players can purchase throughout the game. If you have the handy mat, you can put them on here. And each character has specific dice that go with the card. So this is Cyclops, uh, he's got a little visor symbol. This one's Kitty Pryde, it's got a little her going through a wall. Um, so it's very cool. It's very cool that the dice are all custom and each character in the starter pack comes with two dice. In regular play, if you had more dice of that character, you could do up to four dice for each character, but the starter pack comes with two for each. The starter pack provides you with eight characters. We've got Quicksilver, um, and each one actually has three different versions of the character, and they all have different abilities, which is really cool. Um, Kitty Pride, Angel, Magneto, Wolverine, Juggernaut, Cyclops, and Iceman. So these are the characters you can play with in the starter pack, which is quite a few. Now, in the beginning of the game, you start with eight sidekick die. These are basically non-character specific die that you're gonna use in the beginning to hopefully buy some better dice to add to your bag. Because again, this is a dice building game. Like a deck builder, you're trying to buy new dice to improve your quote unquote deck or bag and get better dice to play. Each dice has a set of numbers on it that correspond to the stats. So the top left uh, number is the fielding cost. That's how much it costs to play the dice. Um, the top right number is the attack, and the bottom right number is the defense. So this is an attack of four, defense of three, and a fielding cost of one, if you roll that specific side. Some sides, so this side would have zero fielding cost, three attack, and one defense. Other dice have burst symbols, like in the bottom left here, and that means you get to trigger a special ability that's on the card, if you have that asterisk. So if you roll the side with an asterisk on it, Lucky you, you get a bonus ability. So you take your dice and you throw them in your little bag here. Shake that sucker up and pull out four. Ta-da! Roll those dice and see what you get. Now I got a thunderbolt, a question mark, a question mark, and a fist. Um, in the game, there are different types of energy. Uh, there's fist, there's bolt, there's mask and shield. And as you can see, some of the cards have a specific uh, type of energy on them. Kitty Pride it has a mask, so she would need three. So after I roll my dice, I can look at them and go, hmm, do I want to re-roll some? Because you have a re-roll step you're allowed to do, which you couldn't do in Quarriors, which I think is a big improvement. Because sometimes, you know, if you roll bad dice, you're shit out of luck. But this gives you one more chance. So I'm gonna go, okay, I will keep, let's say, um, this question mark, but roll the other three. So this is more to like my liking. I rolled a mask, a fist, and a little uh, sidekick pawn. And now, looking at my energy, I go, okay, what can I buy? 
because the key to this game is buying better dice to add to your collection um, so that you can use them in future turns. Now, if I wanted to buy Kitty Pride, it has a mask on it, but that doesn't mean you need three masks. What it means is that one of the energy you use to buy Kitty Pride has to be a mask. And since I have three different energies and one of them is a mask, I could theoretically buy Kitty Pride and you put all the dice, put the dice I use and Kitty Pride in my used pile. So that in future turns, I'll be able to use Kitty Pot, Kitty Pile, Kitty Pride uh, from my pile. Or if I didn't want Kitty Pride, I could get one of the basic action dice. Basic action dice are almost like items and abilities, and they can be bought by both players. It's like a, it's not like uh, restricted to one player. Ambush, for example, uh, one of your character gets plus one attack for each character your opponent has on the field. Let's say instead I want to use three energy to buy one of these. I pick up an action dice and I add that to my use pile. Regardless of what you do, you're trying to buy better dice. Now let's say you don't want to use all of your dice in that turn. Let's say theoretically I wanted to save all of these dice. What I could do then is keep them instead of spending them in my reserve pool. Then next turn when I roll my dice again, those dice will be able to be used to buy better things. That's how you're able to buy something like Cyclops which would require six energy. After you buy your characters, you can choose to field characters if you have the corresponding dice. So when we're talking about fielding characters, let's say I rolled something like this instead. Um, here, you see the fielding cost is one, and the fielding cost for this is zero. So if I wanted to field both characters, what I could do is pay one energy to field Kitty Pride, and zero energy so I can field this guy for free. So now they are in the field zone. If I rolled an action die, I could also put that, I could also use that as well. Any energy you spend and any characters you don't field get put into the used pile. And now let's talk about the combat. So let's say I fielded these three. I've got my Cyclops with an attack of, I can't even read that, uh, attack of six, my Kitty Pride with attack of three, and a Sidekick with attack of one. I can choose to attack with as many or as little as I want. So I could keep this pawn here and not attack with it, and just attack with these two, or I could attack with these two, or just one of them. Doesn't matter. Totally up to you. Uh, it matters in combat which ones you do, so you, sometimes you might want to keep some behind uh, to defend. So let's say I move all three to the attack zone, and my opponent has uh, two dice in their field zone. And let's say the opponent decides to block with both. The opponent has to decide which dice are going to block which attackers. Now, theoretically, if he had more characters, he could block, he could assign uh, more than one dice to one attacker. But for the sake of this battle, we're just going to do one-on-one -on -one blocking. Now, attackers and blockers do damage to each other simultaneously. So player two decides to block Cyclops with Angel and Kitty Pride with Juggernaut and leaves the uh, sidekick dice unblocked. So let's let it play out. Cyclops attacks for six. Angel's defense is two. Angel's attack is two. Cyclops' defense is four. Cyclops knocks out Angel, and Angel cannot beat Cyclops' defense, so it is knocked out. If Angel had an attack of four or higher, then both dice would be knocked out. But in this case, just Angel is out. If we look at this matchup, Kitty Pride's attack is three. That's not enough to pierce Juggernaut's defense of four, and Juggernaut has an attack of seven because he's strong AF, and so he actually knocks out Kitty Pride. The sidekick is unblocked, so they do straight damage one to player two. So this dice would be sent to the used pile. Any dice that attacks and is unblocked gets sent to the used pile. And in the case of excess damage, even though Cyclops had an attack of six and this had a defense of two, damage doesn't spill over. Uh, it just gets wasted. So this is knocked out, but it's not like it does four damage. It's just a blocked attack. Looking here, Cyclops didn't do any damage, so Cyclops returns to the field zone, and Juggernaut would return to player two's field zone. And that's how a combat works. It's important to look at your opponent's dice and go, okay, if I do these dice, they'll probably block with these characters on these ones, so I have to make sure I, you know, use the right selection, and the opponent has to be like, okay, what's the best way I'm gonna get out of this unscathed, or at least with as less damage as possible? Any dice that get knocked out are not sent to the used pile, but are actually sent to the prep area, which is cool because in your next turn, you get to pick up your prep area dice along with the four dice from your back and roll them all together. After all damage is calculated and all spent dice are moved to the used pile, the next player goes. And then on your next turn, you would draw four dice from your bag 
take any dice in the prep area, that means any knocked out dice um, from prior battles, and you roll them all at once. You go until someone runs out of life, and then you are the winner. And one last thing, there are also global abilities, and global abilities are basically on all the cards. And if you pay the energy cost or whatever is on the uh, global ability, you get to do it. So for Enrage, if you pay one lightning bolt, you get to give one character plus one attack. And you don't have to have this dice to use this ability. In fact, you can even use global abilities that are printed on your opponent's cards. So anything that says global ability, either player can choose to use them on their turn if they have the uh, right energy for them. Overall, I really like the game. I love the custom dice. I love that there are symbols for every single character, and they're all different colors. I mean, obviously, it's a collectible game, so they want to make them appealing. But even just from a starter pack standpoint, just having eight, or actually more than eight, like 12 different types of dice with customized symbols is really cool. The theme is really fun. You know, it's got cool art from the comics and stuff, and all the abilities feel just like the characters like i'm not a like a diehard marvel fan but even i was like really impressed by how cool it was to play like kitty pride's ability is they cannot be blocked by sidekicks because get it she can run through things they all have different cool abilities that fit the characters having a re-roll step is really smart and a big improvement from warriors because like i said sometimes you just have a shit roll but if you can have the opportunity to re-roll you do not feel like oh like it's just bad rolling if you roll twice in a row a bad that's just a rare occasion like usually you can get something good from two rolls having different types of energy is uh fun because it doesn't make you have only that like i said i like the system of um one of the dice has to match the energy type otherwise it'd be kind of absurd but because of that it kind of has a fun all right gotta match this symbol and get enough to buy this type of card it's a, it's a fun system that never feels annoying because it's pretty lenient. I really like the concept of keeping characters in your field area. Like, you don't have to attack with all of them. In Quarriors, it's just like you add them all up together and just attack. But uh, there's a lot more strategy in Dice Masters because you can go, Okay, I'm going to keep these two characters in the field to defend me next turn, and these characters will attack. That and having characters that get knocked out go to the prep area makes it feel less of like a huge loss if a character gets knocked out because chances are you'll be able to re-roll them next turn. These features make the game feel like you're never too significantly behind after taking a hit. You always feel like it's fair and balanced throughout. The original setup game gives you like two characters to choose from, but really you can do four characters on four characters, and they all play differently, and they all have different abilities, so not only are there eight characters, but each character has three different ability versions. So there's a lot of variety there, and it's fun to like pick and choose, like, okay, I'm gonna pick uh, these four and use these dice for this match. Now, components-wise, it's pretty flimsy. Like, this bag looks like it's like a school lunch bag. Like, it's like a very sad paper bag. It doesn't come with mats. This was a problem I had with Quarriors, too. Even if it was just like a like cutout paper mat or something, just include that. I get that they kind of want you to buy the nice mats, and the mats are very nice. So if you do buy a starter pack... I would recommend getting the mats because they're extremely handy. Um, but it is kind of a uh, bummer that the regular starter pack does not include any sort of mat at all. With that said, it's a starter pack, so obviously it's not it's it's not a full game. It is a way to start playing the game, and yet eight characters and all the dice to come with it. You don't really need to buy more if you don't want to. I mean, you can have more characters to play with and more dice if you choose to buy other packs or other boosters, but with just the eight characters and the custom dice, you have everything you need to play. If you're wary of like, oh, I don't want to get into like a collecting thing, you don't have to. Um, you could probably just buy the, because they come with like these packs, like I actually bought the uh, <laughs> Avengers vs. X-Men one just for fun, because I liked this game so much. Um, and they just come with uh, eight char like eight characters dice and everything you don't have to go into the booster game i know some people really hate the booster game oh i gotta buy random packs you could just buy a couple of these big packs and that's enough to play the game it's quick play it's simple there's enough strategy there it definitely feels meatier than quarriers quarriers is like the party game you play with your friends like as a group if you want to play a strategy kind of battle game you got to get duel masters because it is much more strategic with the idea of blocking individual dice with other dice uh, it, it, it takes the system 
adds some complexity, but not enough to make it a slog. It's still a quick, smooth game. So overall, I would definitely recommend Dice Masters. I like it more than Quarriers is still fun, but I like Dice Masters more. I still like Quarriers. It's a fun, casual game, but Dice Masters adds a little more strategy, and that makes it uh, better, in my opinion. So, good shit.